Good evening. I hope you can all hear and see me. And uh, I've seen by the comments coming in, there's quite a few logged in already. So uh, we'll give people two or three minutes just to join us. But uh, as a way of introduction, uh, my name is Les Harrow. I'm one of a team of uh, brand ambassadors uh, located throughout the UK. And I actually live in the beautiful town of Harrogate. And just to explain what Harrogate is for some of you, because although this is a UK tasting, I see we've got some people from uh, Hamburg and Germany coming in. Ronnie Blaine from Perth. I used to live in Perth. Good evening, Ronnie. Um, and for other parts of the UK who not be, may not be familiar with the geography, Harrogate is almost halfway point between Edinburgh and London. Uh, it sits in the, the, the middle of uh, North Yorkshire, in the Yorkshire Dales. We're very fortunate. We're close to York, uh, just 20 miles north of Leeds. A beautiful part of the country, five, ten minutes, and we're straight into the Yorkshire Dales from here. So a lovely place to live. Um, and that's where we are tonight, coming from my esteemed kitchen in Harrogate. And I've even polished off some of the bottles tonight to make a little bit of a backdrop for me. So as I say, a very, very warm welcome to everybody. Unbelievably, um, there was 400 tasting packs set aside for tonight's tasting. And everyone is sold. So absolutely fantastic. So uh, thank you very much for that. Um, a lot of people will be um, long-standing society members, but there may be some who are fairly new to the society. So just a very, very quick recap on who we are and what we do, if you're not already um, well-versed in the society. Formed way back in 1983, specialised in single cast, cast strength whisky, the largest whisky club of its kind in the world. And it's a marvellous community to be part of uh, because doing the, the tastings uh, in the north of England where I tend to be doing most of my work, I'm going around meeting some fantastic members. Um, we're all there for one thing. We enjoy whiskey. We enjoy uh, trying new whiskies, exploring new flavours and the colourful whiskies and the wacky things that the society do. So if you've just joined the society recently, very, very warm welcome. Um, and I've also got to say a big thanks to some of my colleagues uh, in the society who actually I've never ever met before because not working and living in Edinburgh, I don't get to see everybody on a very regular basis. Uh, and we're six, seven weeks into lockdown now and what the society have done uh, to provide, I include myself in this as a member, us the members with um, something to cling on to continuity of our membership and being involved with the society, uh, some amazing uh, online activities uh, tonight, which is one. So it's a marketing team, um, the member services team, the girls and boys in there who uh, send out to organise the tasting packs and answer emails and get the bottles sorted uh, when you purchase them. And the digital team, in particular Madeline, uh, who is lurking in the background, um, keeping control of everything tonight. Uh, just having a chat with Madeline before I started, never met her three weeks ago, but she's been an absolute little star for me because I did the Facebook preview tasting two or three weeks ago, and that was uh, the first time I'd done anything live. And then tonight we're using another new form of technology. Uh, and Madeline's been fantastic and just talked me through everything, how to get set up. And I did tell her that uh, up until about 12 months ago, I'd only moved then from an abacus to... Um, a calculator, uh, and then somebody told me about these new final things called fax machines and photocopiers. And hey, lo and behold, 12 months later, look at this, the technology we're using. Absolutely amazing. So thanks very much. I can still see people joining us. But um, tonight, um, we're going to go through some cracking whiskies. I've had a little sample of them, sneak sample of them during the week. I hope everyone got the email and you've had the opportunity of downloading the, the tasting map. Um, if you haven't, I will tell you which whiskies were going uh, in which order because the, when you opened the pack, they may not have been in the order we're going to do it tonight. So we will be starting with the Young and Sprightly, Spicy and Sweet, Juicy Oak and Vanilla, Deep Rich and Dried Fruits, and then the Peated one. But I'll introduce each one uh, as we go through there. Um, May also has a little bit of theme about it for the, the society this month. Uh, last month it was food pairings. This month it's Find Your Spirit Animal. And if anybody tuned in last Saturday night to the virtual uh, pub, I'll say virtual because uh, in case anyone thought we were meeting in a natural pub last week, uh, we're doing a virtual pub, another one tomorrow night, but with naturalist Nick Baker, who did some work for the society, 
Um, a bit of fun, really. And if you haven't tried it, there is on the Society website. You can go in, take a little fun quiz uh, with um, multiple choice questions that lead you through to your flavour profile. Each flavour profile is matched with uh, a particular animal. And when I did this, um, I did it twice. I went back and thought I'd cheat, but it still ended up with the same result. Um, my spirit animal was um, a street tenric, which I'd never, ever heard of before in my life. So I did ask Mr. Google what that is, and apparently they're from Madagascar, these street tenrics. And it's actually called the Lowland Street Tenric, which I thought was a bit strange because I'm a Speyside lad, but uh, they got me down as a Lowland Street Tenric. Although I was born in Bridge of Allen, and that's just in the border between the Lowlands and the Highlands. If you haven't done that, give it a go. Go on the, the website and give it a go and just see which uh, animal um, type uh, suits your flavour profile. Also, hopefully, everyone who has purchased uh, the tasting kit uh, should have received an email with a unique code for uh, going straight onto the website and being able to purchase these bottles. So apart from one, which is the Expresso to the power of four, which is already available uh, on the outturn, uh, all the other four whiskies are unique to all the tastings we're doing in the UK and over Europe uh, this weekend. So if you've got your email and you've got that code and you fancy any of the whiskies tonight once we start sampling them, uh, then I would suggest you get on there too sweet because there isn't a great deal of bottles to go about. So if you find something tonight which is uh, just right up your street, um, then use that code, go straight, take you straight to the appropriate uh, private web page and you can make your purchase. Uh, also, during the evening, please feel free to share any pictures of what you're doing at home uh, with the wider whiskey community. And if you want to hashtag all together SMWS and that, that would be fantastic. I know some people made a great effort uh, ahead of today's tasting and woke up this morning, put my phone on and um, Robin, my neighbour who lives about 800 yards in that direction uh, and who's a society member, he'd sent me a picture of his setup with all these tasting glasses out already. See, he was well on board with it. We've got Chris from Sheffield, who I can see has already commented. Uh, Chris emailed to say that uh, his wife was putting a cheese board together for him uh, and our friends over in, in Preston as well. And uh, Stuart and his good lady. Uh, Stuart emailed this morning to say the bread was in the oven, the cheese was purchased, and they were putting ham on tonight as well. So everybody's having their own little parties, which is uh, great fun to hear. So without further ado, shall we get on to the whiskies? So the first one we're going to, as I say, is if you've got your tasting marked, we're going from left to right. I know if you're looking this way, um, everything's back to front for you. Uh, but it's cask 26.140. And the other lovely little touch as well inside these packs, of course, are your uh, little tasting notes there as well. Um, no doubt some of you have already worked out which distillery is which, have looked at it and couldn't wait till tonight, we'll opened the samples and had a little taste, Damien, haven't you? Um, I know what you like, so um, a bit absolutely fine track and drums here tonight. So the first one, as I say, we're going to start with, it comes under the, the flavour profile of Young and Sprightly. And it's got the lovely name of Chalk and Ore. Um, Seven-year-old, very, very young whiskey. It was distilled on the 23rd of October. It's from the Highland region. It's from a first fill X bourbon barrel uh, and one of only 230 bottles. Uh, now, none of the whiskies tonight are lightweights. Uh, if you look at the ABV in this one, 62.2% uh, and very attractively priced at £55, this one as well. And just before we, we go any further, and I, I apologise just for interrupting, but again... We're going to be looking at different casks tonight, and I'm sure the majority will be well versed at this coming along to tastings or going to the venues, etc. But again, for those who are a little bit unfamiliar with the terminology, uh, and again, I apologise that it's back to front, but these are the three casks which are the most commonly used in the this whiskey industry ex bourbon barrel, hogshead, which is slightly bigger, it's a bourbon barrel just enlarged, and a sherry butt. So, when I mention the names of the, the casks, hopefully you can uh, visualise what they look like and the size-wise. So the first one's, uh, as I say, first full X bourbon barrel. Um, young, sprightly fl flavour profile. 
uh, because of its age, seven years, and you tend to find the young and sprightly ones, <coughs> excuse me, can be quite lively. Uh, so when you take a sniff of this one, be very, very careful initially. Uh, we want to get rid of the, the alcohol because the first thing you do when you get a whiskey and pour it and put your nose in it, all you're going to get is pure alcohol. So just swirl the glass or a little trick that uh, I was taught many years ago in a, a trip to distillery up in Speyside, which is to actually blow in the glass. Just a little blow, gets rid of the alcohol, nose in the glass, all of a sudden you're now getting aromas. And this one is quite a fresh smelling whiskey, this one. And the immediate thing that reminded me of, and unless you were brought up uh, as a young kid in Scotland, uh, or unless you visited it in, on holiday or for family up there, uh, you may not have come across something called Edinburgh Rock. Now, it's not like the seaside rock you would get at Blackpool or Scarborough or uh, 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 anywhere like that. But this is quite soft rock um, and all lovely aromas and flavours. Uh, the nice thing about it is when you eat Edinburgh Rock, you can almost feel your teeth rotting in your mouth before you. There's that much sugar in it. But that was the aroma that uh, reminded me as soon as I, I took a little nose of this one. Andre's coming in there saying, I wish I'd ordered my part before it was sold out. Sorry, Andre, but um, stick with us. If there's any comments come through and you can see some positive ones, then um, you can go online. And well, if you haven't bought the pack, you can't go online. You may have a friend who may be able to do it for you. But yeah, quite a fresh smelling dram, this one. Be very careful, no water yet, 62.2. bit waxy stroke soapy spicy a little bit of pepper coming through there but still even at 62.2 it doesn't sort of take the top of your head off but i'm going to add a little bit of water to this as i say i've had a little i only had the same size samples as you so i haven't had generous portions this week um but i know how much water to put in this he says confidently now i've got a full dram uh, may need a little bit more. So we'll add a little bit of water. Um, then we'll lose it again. I'm certainly getting that waxiness now and a little bit of lemon, possibly because I love the, the aromas and nose of lemons in any whiskey that uh, does it for me. Little sip now I've added the water. It's quite lively, hot, spicy peppery notes come through again but then you'll find once you've swallowed it it kind of settles down in your mouth that one it becomes very pleasant the one thing it did do um was somebody putting oh, oh, oh very drinkable even at 62 it is honestly it is um quite <laughs> it's maybe because i drink a lot of car strength whiskey uh what i did this week when i was going through all the, the, the whiskies uh nosing uh, before water and then adding water and th the finish, etc. I highlighted in each one what I thought was the, for me, um, the nicest part of this whiskey. Uh, and this one actually was the finish. Um, I may add another couple of drops of water. Ho, 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 62%, easy drinking, ha, ha, ha. He says, yeah, a wee touch more water. Again, beautiful nose in this one. That's a little bit better with the water. The balance is just right. Our lovely legs and that as well. Cling it to the glass. It's still quite hot, still quite peppery. But the finish in this one's the bit for me, which made it the most enjoyable part of the whole process of this really nice aftertaste. Um, very, very easy. Something in the nose reminds me of Jolly Rancher Sweets. I'm not familiar with them, but if it's anything like Edinburgh Rock, then I'll, I'll take your word for it. Um, now, this distillery, um, we talked about the waxy soapy, uh, and this distillery, uh, obviously I'm not going to give you the names of the distillery because we just can't do that. And if it was a private taste, you know I probably would, guys, but uh, you'll need to guess it yourself. But this one's uh, from the Highlands region, um, from the very, very north of uh, the Highlands. Uh, it's got an iconic um, sibling which has been reincar reincarnated as we speak, very, very um, 
famous and well sought after distillery, which closed way back in 1983, being brought back to life, shares the same site. And I was first introduced to this whiskey through the society. Uh, and many, many people ask me, well, what's your favourite whiskey? And I'm sure you guys and girls get asked that frequently, particularly from non-whiskey drinkers. Uh, and it's usually, you know, whatever one I have in my hand at the time. I have a clutch of distilleries, many of which I've discovered through being part of the society. Uh, and this distillery falls into that stable. That uh, Anything I've heard from it, I, I've, I've really enjoyed, not been disappointed. Uh, so as I said, I was introduced to this, this distillery by uh, my membership of the society. Uh, Madeline, who I mentioned earlier, uh, she did a little piece a couple of Fridays ago. Uh, and I know this is her favourite distillery as well. So she's probably sitting at her home in Edinburgh and enjoying this one right now as well alongside me, making sure that IT goes correctly. Now, although we're in lockdown and we can't get out to meet all you lovely people at the tastings, um, there's been a lot of work going behind the scenes with the society, as I mentioned, and even for our a group of ambassadors in Europe. We meet online in Zoom uh, three times a week and uh, in the afternoons, uh, Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays, going through a whole lot of different things about, you know, enhancing our existing knowledge and talking about production um, methods and different distilleries and where the flavour originates from. Uh, and this one is well worth noting that this waxiness uh, that's prevalent in this one uh, this distillery is well known for that style of waxiness, uh, soapiness in the distillation. And it came about um, through a buildup of oils in the faint receiver. And every year, as you probably know, uh, usually in the summer, uh, all the distilleries will close down for a couple of weeks or silent seasons, they call it, and do all the, the maintenance and clean all the equipment. Uh, and when they restarted, they found out that the the, the new make spirit, the character had changed somewhat. And they, after some investigation, they discovered that it was these oils in the faint receiver uh, that was creating this waxiness. So they put the gunge back into the faint receiver to recreate this waxy style. Uh, and very often, if you're um, coming across a whiskey from this distillery, candle wax is another um, recognised um, flavour that you'll, you'll see somewhere on tasting notes. So conscious of the time, uh, and as I say, all the, the normal tastings I do, I'm glad to see, Alan, that you enjoyed that one. Light and sharp, very, very good description for that one. Um, it certainly is indeed. Um, when we're out doing the members' tastings live, I normally say to everybody who's there that, you know, don't feel obliged a, to finish the whiskies, particularly if you're not used to drinking car strength whiskey. But please don't finish it if we're moving on to the second one. Don't rush it. Put it to one side. Go back and revisit it later because particularly with one of the whiskies here later on, we're going to try a little bit of time in the glass really you know, works wonders. So we're going to move on to number two and I'll just introduce number two to you. So if you're not finished number one yet, and I'm not going to rush this because once we're off screen later on, I'm going to certainly put my feet up and chill and go back and revisit all these whiskies. Now, the one thing that uh, my biggest challenge tonight is not knocking anything over because I've got everything crammed in the table in front of me. Excuse me, I'll just take a little sip of water. Just to cleanse my palate a little bit before we go on to number two. Um, we're now moving on to spicy and sweet, cask 41.128, perverted pineapples. What a lovely name for a whiskey. Uh, and linking this back to the um, animals, uh, this one, the spicy and sweet flavour profile, links in with the spice bush swallowtail. So if anybody's done this little um, test or quiz online and you've come out as a spice bush swallowtail, congratulations. So perverted pineapples. Um, this is 12 year old, uh, distilled in February 2007, in fact 17, which is a day before my birthday. Uh, from the Speyside region, somebody, Thomas, is asking, what do the legs mean and what does it show about the whiskey? I'll, I'll try and come back to you with that one, Thomas, as we're getting into this one. Um, I'm sure Madeline will remind me if I forget. This, again, is from a first fill ex bourbon barrel, 58.4%, uh, and on price to you lovely members at £54.20. 
and there was only 164 bottles in the outturn. So if you like this one, when you taste it, uh, get online and uh, purchase it fairly quickly. So this one, and I must admit, I the pineapple bit, I'm, I was struggling to get this initially, but the more you get into the nose, the pineapple is certainly in there. So again, we just want to get rid of the pure alcohol. Now we'll get the aromas completely different um, nose from number one. On the palate, that's really, really nice. Spicy and sweet, you get that straight away. Should have said on the nose, um, eventually the pineapple comes through at the end, but sometimes you just need that little drip of, uh, drop of water just to bring out some of the aromas. Uh, the legs, the, I was asked a question about the legs. Part of the attraction for, for me drinking whiskey, particularly cash, you'll see it more in cash strength whiskey than you will in proprietary bottles at 40, 43% and anything like that, is just when you get a nice whiskey and sometimes the legs just sit there, the longer the legs, the slower they come down the glass, that indicates perhaps that the whiskey's got, they've got high viscosity and it gives you an indication of potential mouthfeel. But it's just one of these attractive things that you look at different whiskies and the, the, the legs that trickle down the glass. Uh, and normally if you just swill your glass like that a little bit and then let it look, if you get it in the right light, you'll start to see the legs or the tears as they're called coming down the glass. And if you've got an exercise like this with three or four or five whiskies in front of you, um, you'll see different characteristics uh, of the whiskey clinging to the glass. And, and as I say, some legs will come down very, very rapidly. Uh, some will almost have a little ring around the glass. And then after 20, 30 seconds, you'll just see the little droplets start to come down. And that's an indication, as I say, of viscosity in the whiskey, which just means you're going to get a, perhaps a fuller mouthfeel. So your, your eyes are starting to tell your brain a little bit about some of the, the, the component parts of the whiskey before you're even uh, drinking it. But this one, it's quite lively in the nose again, but much deeper. Fifty-eight point four. and I'm still drinking it neat. So now's the time to add a little bit of water. And we've got watermelons, stroke chemicals. Not sure about that one. Somebody's ahead of me, prefer it neat. Lemon meringue pie. I don't know if this is this one or the last one. Mm. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Now this one's coming together with a little bit of, of water. Now the tasting panel, this is one which I had to disagree with them and I won't get the sack for that, don't worry, because the nice thing about tasting whiskey is what you get out of it. So some of the comments I'm coming out with tonight, you might think, well, I don't know where Les is getting that from because I'm getting nothing like that. Uh, and it's really, this is where, you know, personal choice comes down to it. And we could both be getting the same aroma or the same flavour, but we may describe it in a different way so that the, how you articulate things as well can and make a difference. But this one, the pineapple, as I say, is very much in the background uh, with this one. Averted, not too sure about. On the palate, I get quite a bit of honey, toffee sweetness. Sean's loving the nose in this one. There's a touch of cologne perfume. The thing I got with this one is once I added a little bit of water, it's only 12 year old, but it's one of these funny things about whiskey that and this sounds really strange. It smells older than 12 year old. It reminds me of a whiskey that's possibly, you know, 20, 20 years plus. It just smells more mature than, uh, than this. 
And it's, for me, this one just keeps improving the glass as well. So this is one where, you know, if you leave some aside, go back to later on. And even at 58.4, did I say 58.4? It slips over quite comfortably. Where I do agree with the panel with this one is they said in the last line, uh, it's a warming and woody finish. I think that's where the woody comes through, but it is nice and warmy. Andrew McCrobbie, do you add three drops of water or more to open up the smells and flavour? Um, that is really a difficult one because we're all different. And uh, I've seen, if there's any Scandinavians tuning in tonight, they tend to use one, a pipette with one droplet of water, and that does for them. Um, we're all extremely different. Um, as I say, because I work for the society and I tend to drink more cash strength whiskey than any other type, um, I think my palate has become more attuned to it uh, with the, the, the high strengths. And I, I certainly find it easier now than I did maybe 10, 15 years ago with the water. So sometimes two or three drops. Uh, the important thing is don't add too many too soon because you can't take it out. It's two or three drops. Go back in. It may not change it for yourself. It might still feel a little bit bouncing about your mouth uh, or, or warm in the throat, nothing wrong with going back. But the important thing is just add two or three drops at a time. And eventually your palate will tell you when you get the balance absolutely spot on. Now, this distillery I mentioned, it's from the heart of uh, Speyside. And I was introduced to this one, and uh, not through the society, but by um, at the ex-distillery manager here, who was a good friend of my, my late dad's. Uh, and his name was Neil Gillis, and he did have a spell at Lagavulin, uh, came back to, to Speyside, he was looking after this distillery. I've got a swear box in front of me as well, because I have a feel I'm going to let slip at some point during this evening, I'm going to come out with the actual uh, distillery name, which I'm trying not to, but uh, I see other people are already coming out with some names anyway. Um, but yeah, uh, Neil Gillis, uh, came back to Speyside, looked after the distillery, also looked after Ben Winnis at the same time, which was um, another one of my favourite distilleries. Um, and this distillery, if uh, people are still wondering which one it is and don't have the codes, uh, this one was the very first distillery to get one of the pagoda roofs, which the famous architect Charles Doig from Elgin designed. And this is attached to this distillery way back in 1889. Now, in terms of the production methods, and if anybody's been on distillery visits and, and numerous distillery visits, I'm sure you have seen in your time something called warm tubs, and you've seen this shell and tube, the more modern shell and tube condenser. Uh, now, to get non-technical for a minute, once the spirit goes up, the still rises down and comes down the linearm, and then condenses back, and it hits cold water and condenses back into liquid form again. And the traditional method of doing that was what they call worm tubs. And there's still a handful of distilleries. It's, I think less than 20 distilleries in Scotland uh, still have worm tubs. In fact, some of the brand new distilleries, the smaller ones opening, um, are actually installing them as well to, to hark back to the old days. But a worm tub is as it sounds, a big wooden vessel, copper pipe in it, which looks like a worm. Uh, and that's where the spirit went down into this bucket of cold water uh, and th that condensed it back into uh, liquid again. I've changed it back into liquid. Um, but having one in tubs produces uh, a more heavier style spirit as well than the modern shell and tube condensers. And this particular distillery, which is there really for blending purposes, although when I was introduced as a single malt, I fell in love with it. Uh, but for blending purposes, in the 90s, I think it was, the went to modernise part of the distillery, took out the warm tubs, put in the more modern shell and tube condensers, uh, which are slightly more efficient. Uh, but the word came back from the blenders that it changed the style and character of the spirit that much. They, they eventually went back to doing the warm tubs. So um, a little bit, and again, that does impact on the, the style of the, the character of the whiskey. But as I say, 12 year old, um, and the nose for me got this one. Chris from Sheffield, mouthfeel is quite dry, neat, turn sharp in the water, definitely has the pencil savings in the nose. This is very much along the lines of what I usually prefer. I'm so, so glad, Chris, 
delighted for you like this one. As I say, it's one of um, a, a story that I like. And it's one of these and one of the benefits, another benefit of being society member. And now this destroyer does bottle it um, itself. There is only one official bottling. Um, but whenever I do tastings, we'll introduce uh, a distillery and some people say, never even heard of it, so I've never tried it before. And the beauty of being a member of society is having the opportunity of sampling drums from some of these distilleries, which is very, very hard to get. We're not in competition with the distilleries. We are just trying to bring our members a different perspective and a different uh, experience from what you might expect, or a new experience if you know, had it before. So I'm going to put that one to one side for a short period of time, and we'll be coming back to it. I'll have another mouthful of water just to cleanse the palate. Somebody likes watermelons, don't they? Or is that one of the old comments? Excuse me, while I get on to some of the new comments. It gets better after a few minutes. Just bra, especially with Adam's ale. Well done, Dick. Yes, indeed. Love the flora and fauna 16. So well done, Stephen Lewis. You know exactly which distillery I'm talking about, don't you? Yes, you do. So moving on um, to 68.38 Juicy Oak and Vanilla. And it's called the Butcher Shop Quartet. Now, where the name come from, and I just love the guys in the tasting panel for the ingenuity and uh, coming up with all these names. The Butcher Shop Quartet, um, when you read the tasting notes put there by the panel, you can see why they come up with this, because it's very much, it says the initial impressions for this one, very much meat-themed, beefy, gamey, rich, full of savoury, herbal and stocky notes. I must admit, I struggled along that line, so I was not particularly getting that one at all. Really had to, to force myself to, to find some of these notes. Initially, my first, Sandy, well done, Cast 41 is a very strong finish, lingers for ages, reverse pineapple, so smooth, brown sugar in the finish. Yes, agree, agree, agree. But yeah, the, the, and it's going back to what I was saying about the, the tasty notes. So there is a guide, but what you may get could be completely different. Doesn't mean you're wrong and somebody else is right. Just means you're getting a different experience, and that's the beauty of, about it. Um, and you talk to anybody who works in the whiskey industry and tasting panels, and you'll find some people are far better at picking out particular aromas than a colleague who may have had twice the amount of experience in the industry. Um, it's just your own personal traits in getting this one. But yeah, this one took me a long time to get anything. Meaty. I did, did get there eventually. We don't want to linger too much without water. Again, the legs, if you're looking at legs, we were asked a question. This one is completely different from uh, one and two again. This one's a lot sweeter than I anticipated from the nose. Good evening, Mark Reese in uh, Bolton. Good to see you. Mmm, 57.9%, nine years. And another thing about the cask, <laughs> excuse me for this one, 68.38, you'll all be familiar with the numbering system, 68 being the, the, the code for the distillery, 38 means this is the 38th cask that we've had from the distillery. So this one is not a distillery which comes along on a frequent basis, bear in mind we've been going since 1983, um, so this may be the first time many of you have sampled anything from this particular distillery. I'm going to add water to this one. This is the game changer for me with this one. And I'll see if you agree with it. Flavour profile was juicy oak and vanilla. Without water, there's a bit of juiciness there, but it's not really jumping out of you. Couldn't get the oak in this, no vanilla. But I'll tell you what, once you add a few drops of water to this, and all of a sudden, you can see exactly where the, the, the flavour profile comes from. Aromas now all starts to come together. Get the oak and the vanilla. I 
on the palate. Absolutely wonderful. Real nice juices about it. So hopefully, now you've got it together, you've added water to it, you've tried it again and again, and perhaps again. Juiciness is there, oakiness is there. Vanilla, right at the back on the aftertaste, but very, very nice, lovely, creamy finish in this one. And this one, again, is a distillery um, which um, has a visitor centre. It's surprisingly, and it used to be the most visited distillery in the whole of Scotland, primarily because its location was just off the A9 between Perth and the Burness, so it was very easy to get to. Uh, but I understand uh, the Isle of Arran distillery now has more visitors than this one. And considering Arran's not the most accessible place to get to, surprise me, that they get over 70,000 um, visitors a year to this particular distillery. It's a home of the blended whiskey uh, Bells. 95% approximately of the output of this distillery goes into blending. Um, so again, we're very fortunate to get... Um, get it as a single cask, a very quaint Victorian style distill if you ever visit it. And a lovely story, when my wife and I visited this distillery a few years ago, um, well, the tour had just started about five or ten minutes and there was this couple rushed up at the back of the tour out of breath and apologised uh, to the tour guide and explained that the, the flight from Amsterdam had been a little bit delayed in picking up the car rental but they were here now so they followed us around the tour, and my wife and I were at the back as well. And at the end of the tour, the tour guide, uh, excuse me, I'll just uh, help myself in a little sip. The tour guide they said, any questions? And uh, this chap from, as we now discovered, was from the Netherlands, and said, do you do any car strength whiskey? And she said, oh, we don't bottle any car strength whiskey here. So at the end of the tour, once we're getting a drama, I turned to the guy and said, do you like car strength whiskey? He said, oh, I say, I love it. So went to my wallet, got my business card out, ambassador for the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society. He says, oh, Scotch Malt Whiskey Society. I've just joined it six months ago. I love them. I love car strength whiskey. I love everything they do. Uh, never met the guy before, and we spent the next 20 minutes, my wife was talking to his wife about whatever. We are talking about whiskey. Um, and like long lost friends and it just made me think what a wonderful community the whiskey community is and particularly when it's a society member you get um, who's so enthused about the society and he was telling us that after um, I almost dropped the name of the distillery in there but after the visit to this distillery they were heading up to Inverness doing a couple of more distilleries back there over there uh, and eventually heading back to Edinburgh, they were going to go to the vaults uh, for lunch before catching the flight back to the Netherlands. So a very, very uh, happy society uh, member. The one thing I haven't covered off yet about uh, this whiskey, I have covered the flavour profile, the cask, the age of it, the highlands, is the actual cask. It's a recharred hogshead. Now, if you can remember the photograph I showed you just at the beginning, and just as a reminder, the hogshead is the one in the middle. So hogshead is effectively an ex bourbon barrel, uh, just five or six extra staves added, which are larger than size to 250 uh, litres. Uh, the smaller the cask, um, the more uh, surface contact there is with the liquid, uh, the, the quicker whiskey will mature, like the sherry butt, the larger one, takes a longer time to really come to, to maturation. Um, but it gives the, the distillers all these variations to play about with. But this one was also recharred, and just very, very briefly, because I know most of you will be familiar with the terminology of charring uh, and what happens in the American bourbon industry before uh, they put the bourbon into it, into the cask or the barrels, they call it in the States, they will char it. So it's effectively setting it in fire. And there's three different levels, uh, light, medium, uh, heavy char, depending on what distillant wants, what style. Uh, and charring effectively it allows, it opens up the pores uh, in the wood. So when the liquid goes in there, it extracts all these wonderful flavour uh, compounds uh, into the spirit. And eventually, over time, um, once uh, a cask, in this case, this hogshead, had been decanted, perhaps the cooper looted it and said, not a great deal of life left in this. 
what they can do is to rejuvenate the cask and give it a little bit more life to it, is to, to rechar it again. So they take the initial char off, just a thin, thin shaving, set it back and fire, and lo and behold, the wood will then start to give out some more flavours again. So it's just like um, giving it a little bit of a, an injection uh, to, to spruce it up and spice it up a little bit. Also induce these lovely flavours. Aha, Alan McLaughlin's working it out. Now that I've added water to this one, tastes very like the distillery profile for this distillery. I did not recognise it at first. Well, I'm glad you're enjoying it. I'm glad you didn't recognise it at first because that's part of the, the mantra of the society is providing you with a different experience. But sometimes uh, these little nuances in there, once you know a little bit more about it, you think, yeah, I recognise that now. So I'm going to put that aside for later on. We're going to move on to the Cask 30.110 Espresso to the power of four. Deep, rich and dry fruits. So excuse me while I turn over my tasting sheet to get to that bit that's appropriate there. And this one, 12-year-old. Um, uh, distilled on the 6th of June 2007, again from Speyside region. Um, it's a first fill sherry butt, so that's the really large uh, casket you saw in the picture. Uh, it's Spanish oak, and it was Oloroso was in it beforehand, one of 596 bottles. So if somebody say, well, why is there 200 bottles out of that one and 596? Again, once you've seen the size of the casks, that's understandable because it holds the, the volume is, is a lot bigger, 64.5%. So it's actually above the initial, I'm assuming the initial filling was 63.5%, which is standard. Uh, but sometimes distilleries will uh, fill some casks at a higher range if they're looking to have something in the warehouse for something a little bit different in years to come, but 64.5%. But this one, and this is where I thought tasting panel and myself, it was like the stars aligned because I just about agreed with everything that got in it. But the colour on this one is absolutely awesome. Um, 12 year old, all the colour, because we don't add any caramel colouring in society. All that is natural colouring, absolutely beautiful. And they describe it as highly polished conkers. This was followed by a herbal whack. Now, I do worry about one of the panellists um, because and I can't remember which tasting was the last few months, whether it was Manchester, Liverpool, Sheffield, Leeds, wherever, I can't remember. But it was two whiskies and we had on the same bill. Uh, and the tasting notes, it was obviously this panel member. And if you're watching tonight, identify yourself. Um, it says, like crushed aspirin. I thought, who sits at home and crushes aspirin and knows what they smell like? But uh, there we go. Um, crushed aspirin. So I'll need to try that at some point. Then it goes on, at the same time, roasted chestnuts and black strap rum. Now, if somebody in the tasting panel sits at home and crushes aspirin into their black strap rum, we do have problems. So I'm dying to meet whoever that panel member is who... Uh, um, as the crushed aspirins, because I've seen this two or three times. But having said that, as I mentioned earlier, is what how we describe a certain aroma. We may be um, smelling it exactly the same, but we'll describe it slightly uh, differently. Richard, I've got the 70CL bottle, it has disappeared, but uh, I think it, it said he liked it very, very much. This one is already on sale. Uh, there we go, Richard. I've got you up now. But the 70 CL of the 30112, it's an absolute sherry bomb. It is. If you like sherry style whiskey, really, really good expression, this one. But what did surprise me, because sometimes when it's a first fill sherry butt, sometimes it can be really, really, really intense, even for me. And I love that style of whiskey. But this one isn't at all. And even at that strength of 64.5, I haven't added water yet, by the way. This is one of these where I'm a bit quirky and I shouldn't be talking about somebody in the tasting panel um, writing crushed aspirin uh, as a descriptor. Because when I get a whiskey like this, I can sit for five, ten minutes just nosing it. Absolutely fabulous nosing this, the aromas. 
still something in neat, but I do do have to add a little bit of water at some point. Don't want to spoil it too much, so I'll just have a little bit of water. Now it says, with the addition of water, the dark sweetness of molasses appeared next to the caramelised figs, as well as pruning armagnac tart. His taste was that of a juicy pack of sultanas, stirred with a cinnamon stick and a death by chocolate cake made with PX sherry. PX, if you're not familiar with that uh, terminology, is Pedro Jimenez. Two types of sherry, um, or many types of sherry that the, the Scots whisky industry will use. But two of the favourite are Pedro Jimenez and Oloroso. Uh, and this one's Oloroso, which is a bit drier, nutty uh, type. If you get aromas of nuts in it, that's an indication it could be Oloroso. Absolutely lovely. Now, one of the descriptors that I had down for this, and it may be that it was unique to where I was brought up, up in Elgin, um, but we had something years back which we call Russian toffee, and it was jet black, and it may have had a, a more common name, um, but we called it Russian toffee. Now, whether it was just Elgin in the northeast of Scotland or where anybody else in the UK is familiar with that, if you're a similar age to myself, you know, to under 25, uh, if you're familiar with that terminology, please let me know, because it'd be interesting to know if, if anybody else is, uh, knows of that. Reminds me of the signature, signatory Edward Dower 2009. I know it's not that distillery. It reminds me of this bottling. Too much of the cast for me. Sorry, overwhelming everything. I can appreciate that because, as I say, when it's a first fill, um, sometimes have that impact. You might like a little bit of sherry, but not too much. But for me, this this worked really, really well. But I don't know. Has anybody else got this um, Russian toffee yet? And sticking with sweets. Oh, Charlie Harley. Oh, I remember the Russian toffee. That's two of us. So I'm assuming, Charlie, you're a similar age to me, between 25 and 30. But we won't tell anybody else the difference. Uh, 25 and 30, double it and add a bit more, I think. Um, but this one, on the, the finish, and I'm going to go and refer to another favourite um, sweet of mine. We've got a theme coming through tonight. We started with Edinburgh Rock. We've went through Russian toffee. Uh, I'm now going to go and do a penny dainty, um, which again is what we refer to in Scotland. It was McCowan's Highland toffee um, with a healing coup on the label, if you can remember that. And when um, this is what this is a whiskey to chew in the finish. You don't drink this one. You actually chew it to a conclusion. Absolutely wonderful. Whiskey wings. Um, where are we? Cherry bomb, brown sugar, custard, walnut, chalky note, strudel, prunes, raisins. Could spend all night on this nose. I know exactly where you're coming from because that was my reaction as well. Um, and I, I'm not going to drink too much of this because I want to sit later on this evening and really savour this one. But... Not everyone's preferred style, I appreciate that. And as I say, when it's a first fill sherry, it can be quite overpowering. But if you like a sherry bomb, then this is this is wonderful. And again, it's one of those which really, really develops in the glass. So if you've got the willpower, put it aside, go back and revisit it later on. Another little bit of water just to keep the throat lubricated and to obviously also get this last one out of the mouth. This is still sticking. Russian toffee and Highland toffee still available. Peter Brunskill, please let me know where you can get Russian toffee. And if it's a wee corner sweetie shop in Pansport Road in Elgin, I'll be up there as soon as the lockdown's finished. Talking the lockdown, do apologise. I couldn't find my little SMWS Society members um, lapel badge tonight. Uh, one of the, the the terrible things about lockdown is once the first two or three days are over, you start tidying things up and the house is that tidy, you can't bloody find anything uh, after it. So I don't know, it's in the house somewhere, I just couldn't find it tonight. 
Chris Easton, this one is very well matched to the extra mature cheddar. I'm sampling with it. I'm very envious. Uh, I might get some. Oh, Peter, I'll bring you some Russian toffee to the next Leeds tasting. I can't wait till we're up and running. Thank you very much, sir. So moving on, I'm still going to have to take another glass of water. This one is just sticking to the mouth. Right. I think as well. Right. On to the last one. Traditionally, we'll finish with a peated one. And this is cask 53.324, lighthouse to smokehouse. Now, with the tasting notes that the panel have done here, take my hat off to them, if I had a hat on Stephen McConaughey, um, because it's not so much a tasting note as it's a storybook. Uh, and if you've read the tasting notes before the event tonight, if they don't draw you into, I'm physically there, on Isla, with a drum in my hand, then, then nothing will. So top marks to that, it just really draws you in there. Uh, and this one I found, personally, that this could be one for those, oh, Sandy McClellan's also eating mature cheddar. The cheddar cheese industry must be loving you guys. Russian submarines must have dropped a trophy and lost him out. That's a very good comment. Sorry, back to this one. I do apologize for digressing there. Um, this one, I believe, uh, because every time I do an event, I always, before we introduce the last whiskies, is Emily here averse to the peated uh, style of whiskies? And there's maybe one or two put their hands up and I say, you want to give it a try? No, no, I, I really don't like it. I think for these type of people, this might be... Um, an opportunity to, to change their mind. So cask, uh, distillery 53.324. Again, it's a first fill uh, ex-bourbon hogshead. Eight-year-old, and uh, this is quite incredible for the age of it. And um, the nose is, as I described it, very light and delicate, very perfumed, almost like talc. I've enjoyed this one so much. I've had two samples before tonight because I went back and revisited and thought, this is this as good as I thought the first time? And it really was. Again, we talked earlier about the legs, different legs, different viscosity this time coming down. The legs are running a little bit quicker uh, and not as long, but very, very nice indeed. But 57.7, again, I, I worry about myself thinking, Christ, this is so easy to drink at 57.7, but it is. Very light and delicate. The smoke is there, but it's, it's almost camouflaged in the back. It's not one of these big hitters that's going to jump out the glass and punch you in the face. Sandy McClellan, not a massive Pete fan, Pete fan, but that nose wants to make me drink it now. Please do, Sandy. You're my guinea pig. If what I've said earlier is true, uh, I know Sandy. Sandy comes to all the, the, the events in Liverpool. Uh, good to see you tonight, Sandy. And yes, I know this is not your, your, your favourite style, uh, but please persevere and go with it. So the water starts to bring out a little bit of the smoke again, but for me with this one, it's the sweetness that cuts really through it that makes it such a, a lovely, lovely whiskey. For the real peat freaks, you may think there's well, not enough peat and smoke in, in it for me, um, but I think this is a really, really good expression from, from this distillery, which I know has a lot of fans amongst the society. Um, if you ever go to Isla and visit this distillery, um, one or two clues along the way, the, the view from the still house, they reckon is one of the best views from any still house in Scotland, Massive big windows looking right over to Isle of Jura, the Paps of Jura. I'm not being rude there. And uh, that is what they're called. It's the sister distillery to Lagavulin. Um, and use exactly the same barley source, but the, the two drinks are so distinctively different. Uh, Lagavulin and the Lagavulin, they can sell that by the bucket load. So all of that goes into single malts. This distillery, and again, I almost had to put some money in my swear box uh, by giving away the name. Uh, this distillery, the, the, the bulk of the production goes into the, the blends uh, and it goes into Johnny Walker Black, which is usually 
what you tend to get offered in some of the, the, the flights when you're flying away on holiday. Uh, and if I do have that on the, 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 the plane, the, the story is so easily identified on the Johnny Walker Black. So as I say, use exactly the same barley as Lagavulin, uh, but this is where the production starts to make a difference. We talk at the Society and have for very many years, self-included, uh, about beauties of single cask and um, how it creates something completely different, unique, which it does. Um, but we've been doing a lot of work in the last two or three weeks, and quite rightly so, starting to look at the start and the production process of overlooked um, as where some of the flavours profiles start to, to come in. Uh, this distillery has a longer fermentation time, taller stills and lag of rubin, so all these things start to create a different style of character. Um, Peaty style whiskey is a bit like yourself, Sandy. You know, it's, I wouldn't say it is my most preferred style of whiskey, um, but um, some of the 10 year old, 12 year olds, I love whiskies I've had, which have been matured in bourbon casks, still with that little bit of rough edge. But with this one, the, the sweetness cutting through that makes it absolutely wonderful. We've got whiskey and whiskers, same with Sandy, I'm not a fan of peat, but this is quite enjoyable. It's a nice, salty seaside and beach barbecue draw. Thumbs up, absolutely wonderful. So I'm looking at the time, I'm conscious. My wife's not here. Those who come to my tastings know my wife's normally on hand and giving me this, or you're running over, hurry up and get the next one poured. So I'm looking at my big clock there to the right, and it's telling me it's nine o'clock. But that last whiskey was absolutely wonderful. So I want to say all the whiskies that you've enjoyed tonight, uh, we've got uh, Lorna from there, sits so beautifully in the palate with different notes in the tongue. She absolutely loves the distillery anyway. As I know beforehand, hope you're enjoying your homemade bread. I think we've got the right L. Jackson, your homemade bread, your cheese, and your, your, your cold meats this evening. I did suggest finishing the evening off with a beer. Uh, but I just want to sort of give you a little bit of heads up as to what's coming uh, with the society. But first of all, as I say, all these whiskies are available on the website. You've got the link. I had a quick look uh, earlier this evening. Um, there wasn't huge amounts of bottles in there, so if you found something tonight you think, I, I really like this, get on there and order it now, please do. Um, as I say, Kate Gibson, fantastic birthday gift. It's like a seaside holiday in a glass. When you say fantastic birthday gift, Kate, uh, are you hinting at something there to somebody that you would like it as a birthday gift or have you given it as a birthday gift? But you're quite right, absolutely wonderful uh, birthday gift. I mentioned right at the very beginning, society are doing a lot. My colleagues up in Edinburgh are doing an awful lot to, to keep in contact with you and offering all this wonderful online uh, content. Um, we've got the online members room at uh, on the website, which has got a host of interesting information in there if you want to uh, you know, increase your, your knowledge, uh, general knowledge and, and uh, the whiskey or the society. Tomorrow night is a night I'll be tuning in. Um, we're having another pub night. As I say, it's a virtual pub, not the real pub, folks. Don't get too worried. Uh, we're going to join the team at 8 o'clock to celebrate the Highland Whiskey Festival because May is the month when a lot of the whiskey festivals are on. We did a session last week to celebrate the Space Life Whiskey Festival. Obviously, they're not going ahead this year, but um, tomorrow night, the Highland Whiskey Festival. We've got Robin Lane, who many of you will be already uh, familiar with uh, providing some music with Richard Patterson from White Mackay coming along. Uh, Richard's a bit of a character as well, uh, well worth watching. Uh, so that's tomorrow night at 8. 29th of May, we've got the Scotland Safari tasting, that's the festival bottles. Packs are already available to purchase online if you've not already got yours. June and July, virtual tasting packs will be on sale soon. Um, so there's lots of activity going on to, to keep you. And my lovely, lovely assistant, Madeline, the, the IT guru, the, the digital queen of the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society, and she's doing a little spot next week as well. She told me she's, she's a little bit nervous about it. Well, Madeline, now you know how we feel doing these things. So uh, I'll be watching you uh, next week, Madeline. I hope you enjoyed your favourite distillery 26 tonight. So thanks, everyone, for tuning in tonight. Hope you've enjoyed the evening. Hope you've enjoyed the whiskies more. Uh, and there's something out of that five which uh, tickled your fancy. 
uh, and you'll go on to to purchase a big bottle and uh, enjoy it at home. You have to enjoy it on your own because you can't invite your friends around unless you keep it for a while. But uh, may see you online again in, over the coming months. But genuinely, what I really want is to be back out there where it's safe to do so, obviously, and doing the live tastings with you because I never realised how much uh, I really missed coming out and meeting our members and sharing a, a, a dram person to pe person. So again, many, many thanks for coming in tonight, supporting society. Hope you've enjoyed the samples and hope to see you safe and sound very, very soon. So with that, slanjiva and good evening.